So if you haven't been keeping up with the news lately, then recently there was a new UN climate summit that sparked a lot of interest on social media and through the news. This is because of a very strong and inspiring speech from Greta Thunberg. Now what happened was this speech sparked a lot of interest through social media by both people who are inspired by her and those who are, I guess you could say, threatened by her. Now these people that were threatened by her basically attacked, attacked a 16 year old based on her views or her point of view on climate change that basically disagreed with their ideals. And I'm not going to go into that but I thought I'd touch on it because it has something to do with what we're about to talk about. What I want to talk about is the new IPCC report that was just posted after that UN summit. And what they go over is the effects of climate change on the sea level rise as well as the cryosphere, meaning the ice. So let's get right into it. At the climate summit in Monaco, the IPCC released a report which gave extensive coverage on the effects that climate change and global warming are have on sea level rise and the cryosphere together. I'll leave a link down below of the full report, but the report is over a thousand pages long and is covered through multitude of scientific evidence as well as statistical facts covered by a huge variety of expert scientists. The report illustrated that since the 1970s, the ocean has been consuming an excess of 90% of the heat trapped in the atmosphere. It also consumes roughly about 30% of the excess CO2 in the atmosphere, meaning that the ocean has become a major buffer of extreme extensive human-induced climate change, meaning that it is currently protecting us from some of the most dangerous effects that we probably can't imagine. The report predicted that in the 21st century, we're going to see a lot more extremes than previously predicted. These are just some of them. The oceans will be warmer. They'll become more acidic. We'll have decreased dissolved oxygen in the ocean. We have greater stratification, which means that the density differences in the layers of the water will change. We'll have more extreme El Ninos and La Ninas. There will be greater oceanic heat waves. The IPCC report have already stated that sea levels are currently on the rise. The IPCC report predicts that by 2050, if we do not act, we are going to have more extreme floods that would have occurred every 100 years occur annually. If we do not stop what we are doing to the atmosphere, or what we are pumping, would be a better word, out into the atmosphere, then sea levels will rise by a predicted value of 0.84 meters, or 2.8 feet. Let's not forget that we are also shifting the ocean's chemistry. It's not only losing oxygen, it's also gaining a lot of carbon dioxide which is destroying the pH levels or I guess decreasing the pH levels to a more acidic range. What this means is that if this continues to happen, the biodiversity will go down. And what that means is that organisms that rely on calcium carbonate for shell production which is most organisms in the water, then they're gonna die out. And the easiest one for me to tell you are coral reefs. It's already happening. If we have excess CO2 in the water, we have decreased calcium carbonate. The report also states that over the century, we're going to have shifts in global ocean biomass, which will not only affect multitude of environments, it's also going to infect or affect, not infect affect every single living species, humans, business-wise, as well as food source-wise, extensively. 
The report also clarifies that two of the world's major ice sheets are shrinking faster than predicted, the Greenland and the Antarctic ice sheet. In the Antarctic between 2007 and 2016, mass loss tripled. In fact, there was a loss of 2.7 trillion tons of ice. In Greenland, mass loss doubled this year. Heidi Steltzer, who is the co-author and ecologist, has stated that depth, coverage and extent of snow is decreasing. What she's saying is that basically snow is arriving later, covering less and melting faster than we've seen. Permafrost temperatures have increased, melting faster than predicted, causing unstable surfaces and releasing a lot of built up greenhouse gases. Permafrost locks up a ridiculous amount of carbon in the soil. This is because it's been locked up for two years or more. That's why it's called permafrost. The amount locked up is roughly between 1,460 to 1,600 gigatons, which is almost twice as much carbon than in the atmosphere. Lastly, and most certainly not least, mountain regions are losing an astonishing amount of ice cover, meaning that these areas are becoming drier and have less free-flowing water globally. These problems are not theoretical by any means. In fact, they are currently occurring right now and we can see them very clearly. Well, some of us can. So you've already heard of uh, the consequences of what's going to happen. Who's affected? Short answer, everyone. Long answer, major fishery businesses have had to shift their food stocks or what their catch is globally. What this means is there are losses of millions for major businesses. Roughly 680 million people live in coastal areas. 65 million people live on small developing islands, while 670 million live in high altitude mountain regions. What I'm trying to get at is that each and every one of these areas is home to millions and millions of people and they are at a very real risk of inundation and desiccation if temperatures continue to rise and we continue to basically destroy the only planet that we know that we can survive on. Let me give you an example. The Pacific Islands are at a very real risk at the moment where their islands currently facing sinkage or inundation and erosion. This is caused by thermal expansion as well as sea level rise. In fact, there are currently two of Tuvalu's nine islands that are sinking. And every single island is only sitting just above three meters above seawater. Food and waterborne illnesses are becoming more common globally. In fact, it's a lot more common in the indigenous Arctic region. And this is because of a toxic bacteria known as Vibrio. Vibrio have been shown to thrive in warm, salty waters and are now becoming the poster boy to climate change and global warming. Essentially showing scientists that if this toxic bacterium is thriving in these areas, then it means that the ocean or the water temperatures are increasing and becoming habitable for this species of bacteria. Okay, so we've got sea levels rising, we've got the ice caps melting, we've got sea ice becoming less or covering less ground, we've got the thermal expansion of the ocean increasing, we have acidification becoming more common, we've got waterborne illnesses such as Vibrio becoming more common. There's just a lot going on in this one year that we found, or through a decade, that has happened because of us. Are there any potential fixes, you're probably wondering? No. 
There's no potential fix to this problem. The IPCC report states that there may be no way to reverse the effects or reverse what we've done to the atmosphere. However, there are ways that we can manage and mitigate any future problems that may arise because of an increased CO2 or increasing temperatures. If we are able to control the amount of carbon output that we are pumping into the atmosphere, sea levels may never rise past 0.3 meters as opposed to the 0.84 meter prediction if we do continue to pump out what we're doing at the moment. Michael Oppenheimer, a lead author of the report, has stated that we can adapt to this problem up to a point, but that is determined by how well we can mitigate our greenhouse gas emissions. I'll finish off with this. Do we have to lose everything to realize where we went wrong? And that is that. I hope you guys liked that video. Something a little grim, but very needed. Um, if you didn't know what the report was, as I said, it's down below. Make sure you check it out. Probably don't need to read a thousand pages, but you know, that's what this video is about. Summarize that as much as I can, which was very hard, but I think I did a pretty good job. Anyway, that's that. I hope you liked that video. Make sure you educate, don't eradicate. Subscribe, like, you know the gist. Share it around. Let's try and get to that 100 subscriber goal. And, um, yeah, try and get new videos out every Wednesday, every week, new content as much as I can, and I'll see you guys next week. Make sure you check out Cape Cost. I can't talk. I'll see you guys next week.